It is the compositing window manager that refuses to give up the ghost. You are watching the Compiz Reloaded General Options Tour right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. We have arrived to the next part of our tour in the Compiz Reloaded series. This series supersedes everything that I have on my YouTube channel concerning Compiz, and we are using the latest Compiz Reloaded version 08.12. If you point your web browser to the link in the description, it will take you to my website here at cupoflinux.com where there is a video overview and a new section has been added for the Compiz Reloaded video tour listing. Every time I add a new episode, I will put a link here so that you can easily have access to those videos. Additionally, a new resource has been added. One of my staff members here at Cup of Linux, JV, compiled and built Compiz Reloaded on his Void Linux machine, and uh, he provided a tutorial for the Compiz module for Moksha, which is an E17 fork. And there is a link provided for that right here. So for those of you who are running Moksha, uh, you can uh, have this uh, working. Unfortunately, though, um, this particular tutorial, he had stated that this doesn't work with the E17, 18, 19, and uh, 20 builds. That sort of thing. So, yeah. Uh, but if you're using Moksha, you can uh, do some really wicked stuff. So, uh, and, and the thing is, you know, the Enlightenment desktop already has a lot of really wicked special effects. With Compiz on top of that, talk about, wow, you'll have a desktop that's lightweight and uh, an eye candy experience unlike none other. Personally, that's probably a little bit too much eye candy for my liking, but to each their own. And of course, uh, all of the other sections in this post here are uh, being updated as I go along. So good stuff here indeed. With all of that out of the way, we are looking at the Compiz Settings Manager, and we're going to be working in the General Options category, and that is these three things here today. First, let's have a look at this. Now, I've never used this before. We're going to enable uh, the Commands plugin by checking on this here. And then we're going to add a Command Line option. All right, I'll just grab something that's pretty basic here. Um, I'm going to go into properties on an icon I already have on my desktop. And, uh, oops, I don't want to delete that. I want to actually edit this so that I have uh, the command xfce four terminal hyphen hyphen drop down. I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to paste this as command line zero in this option. Now, there are a number of things I can do to this, such as adding key bindings. So I could uh, put in, um, you know, uh, when you press the button and you enable it, it will ask you to grab, you can press the grab a key combination and just type in what it is that you want to do, and then uh, it will do that. I'm going to press cancel because I want to try something different here. You also have mouse button bindings. So if you have um, if you have one of those mouses like I have that has 50 million buttons on there, you can actually enable that. I want to do something cool. Why don't we assign an edge to this? So uh, you'll see I have top selected here. Okay, um, but maybe I could put this in the upper right corner press OK. Now, when I move the mouse to the upper right corner, do you see what that just did? It just dropped down my terminal. Pretty cool, huh? So, you know, you have different options. So, if you want to set up a mouse button by pressing disabled, 
and then pressing enabled, you can uh, have maybe shift, you know, you could press shift and then mouse button one or whatever. Um, and you can even have um, the corners of the screen. So this dialog pops up, giving you a lot of really cool options uh, for you to be able to set up all of your custom commands. And I know somebody uh, on the channel was asking about that yesterday. So any command that you can issue into the terminal can be added into this listing. And uh, it looks like there are 24 custom commands that you can pile into this. Pretty cool stuff indeed. Probably not something I'm going to use on a regular basis, but very nice in its own right. Next, let's go into general options here. And these are different things that you can uh, have assigned, such as an audible bell or a system beep. This is a default set setting right here, and I haven't really messed with that. Okay, you can uh, tell it to ignore hints when uh, the software is maximized. You can hide or skip taskbar windows uh, when uh, entering the show desktop mode. There is an edge trigger delay. So if you were to um, set a delay here, this would allow you so that when you're moving your your mouse to like one of the edges or a corner, you can have it make it wait 10 seconds. You know, if you, you must, you know, put the mouse in the corner of the screen, for instance, and have it sit there for five seconds before it will uh, invoke uh, its commands and that sort of thing. Here, you can define a specific cursor theme uh, for Compiz. So if you know which theme you want, you can uh, point to it and then define a specific cursor size. Uh, you can set your ping delay here. Really not sure what that one does. Undirect full screen windows. Allow drawing of full screen windows. Uh, which are not to be directed off screen. Um, I believe that uses quite a bit more resources, so I don't have that available. You can uh, select a default icon. I guess that's for your windows, but I don't have borders, so yeah. Force independent output painting, which will paint each output device independently, even if the output devices overlap. And then a texture compression. If available, it can compress images and save memory and that sort of thing. This is where you can define your display sending settings. I just left it at good, um, but you can reduce the quality by going too fast or if you want to um, have the best possible look, uh, you could go with uh, the best. I just keep it on good. Good is good enough for me. I mean, I can see things uh, nice and clearly here. It, 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 it works for me for this particular setup that I have going. Okay, you can add uh, pseudo lighting to this. So it'll uh, use diffuse light when the screen is being transformed. Uh, I have it shut off to save resources. You can have it automatically detect your uh, screen's refresh rate and you can define a refresh rate. You can also have it detect the output of your devices. Uh, there is overlapping output handling, and i um, really not sure what this does, so I just leave well enough alone. Uh, I think the original was smart mode. Okay, and then there are different output settings here. This, of course, is wrong. Uh, 1280 uh, by 768, but this may have been uh, placed in there because uh, actually uh, when I have my computer hooked up to my high-def television, I actually use the 1280 by 768 resolution rather than the 1366 by uh, 768 resolution uh, that you see on the screen here. 
Okay, now we have focus and raise behaviors. And what this basically does is when you click and you just click a particular item on the screen to give it focus. Um, standard window rules here. Okay, you can have it raise on click, auto raise. You can set the delay in milliseconds, how quickly uh, you want it to do this. Um, you can also set a focus prevention level. And this is for those cases where you may accidentally click another window and you really didn't want to give it focus or um, you are using mouse gestures and you mouse over a window and you've had that mouse sitting over the window and then it wants to switch focus. It all depends on what you have set up in the other options that we're going to be looking at later on in this series. Um, I just have the focus prevention level set to low. That seems to work fine for me. And then the focus prevention level on any window is fine. Okay, and then, of course, you have your key bindings here. Now, by default, most of these key bindings here are set at a same level for most of your average desktops, such as, you know, the close window, you would press Alt-F4. I mean, you even do that in Windows, and it'll close uh, the specific window that you have opened. But you can also... Um, assign other features. So you could set this up to a mouse click and a key press if you wanted to. By pressing these disable buttons and pressing the enabled in the dialog, you can actually change these. Now, I'm not going to go through and change any of these. I just want you to be aware that these are here and these options are available to you. Um, especially if you need them for uh, accessibility purposes. Um, some people like to use their computer without even having a mouse to interact with. The, you know, I, I know some people that like to do everything with keyboard commands, and these key bindings here will allow you to be able to do that. Let's talk about the desktop size. This is a pretty neat feature here. You're going to see that my horizontal virtual size is set at 3. Then I have vertical set at 1, and then the number of desktops. So you can see I've got three desktops here. If we change the setting to a 2 now, to vertical virtual size... Look at that. Now I've got six desktops. Now I have nine. So, I mean, if, if you've got a lot of workflow going on and you've got lots of different applications running, um, you could literally have as many desktops as you want in here. I mean, this is quite amazing stuff here. So that's uh, what that does there. And then, of course, you have virtual desktops. I've never really played with this one and really haven't quite got a clear understanding of that one. Experimentation is key. Try it out and see what it does. Next, we have Mate capability. Now, uh, at present, if I press Alt-F2, I do have a run dialog. Mate capability here, by enabling it, um, will allow you to uh, have compatibility with Mate. All right, excellent. It still works. But uh, it looks like we have some commands that we can issue in here, uh, such as uh, taking a screenshot. Now, I don't have Mate screenshot installed, so I need to put in a different command if I want to do a screenshot. So let's do something XFCE-like. I have one here. Let's go into properties on this and edit this. XFCE4 dash screen shooter.
All right, let's grab a key combination. And let's give it a try. Excellent. So you can see now that the XSCE screen shooter is coming up here. And so now I can use this to get my screenshots and that sort of thing. So it looks like this has some pretty nice customization tools. All you need to do is be able to put in the command that you want. And so that gives you some additional options uh, right there. Uh, we already did a terminal one. Uh, just from the main option, so you don't even have to have the make compatibility on at all. You could shut that off because if uh, you can just go into the commands section right here and put in those commands that you want, enable it, and so if the 24 is enough, uh, that's great. But if you need more than 24, then of course um, you would at least get three more out of it by using the Mate uh, compatibility tool and assigning your uh, screenshot. Um, take screenshot of a window. So it looks like you might be able to do a window screenshot with this. And then, of course, uh, a terminal. You know, you would set up a terminal here. So pretty much uh, that is the general options tour. And in our next episode, we're going to have a look at the accessibility options. Great for those who have vision defects or just want to have some really cool pizzazz to add to the desktop and to have better, you know, focus on all of your uh, windows, that sort of thing. So pretty cool. We'll look at that next. We'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.